Well, we were just, you know, we were just watching some of the, the comments from Bruce uh, after the selection, and obviously there's a lot of good teams that don't get in the tournament. So I think the day that you're not appreciative of being in this tournament is the day you should quit playing and quit coaching. Um, you know, only about 20% of the teams that play Division One basketball get the opportunity to be in the tournament every year. So, uh, you know, we're thrilled to be back. Uh, obviously, we've overcame a lot this year with some injuries. Um, you know, both to Martine and then to Ronnie late in the season when, we, when really we had to have a good week against Villanova and DePaul. Uh, we found a way to get that done uh, without Ronnie in the lineup. So, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of this team and proud that we have an opportunity to go rep represent Creighton once again in the, in the NCAA tournament. Question for you. <coughs> Coach, uh, just talk about your seating and playing Kansas State. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, you know, we're wearing a white jersey in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So. First of all, that's that's not easy to do. So you know we're we're proud of that, um, and and uh, you know K State. I've known Bruce Weber a long time. We've been friends a long time. Uh, he's done a terrific job everywhere he's been, and I think I don't think this team is any different. Uh, they've had, they had a very successful season in a very good Big 12 conference this year. Uh, you know played Kansas close uh, a couple different times. Uh, so, you know, they'll be disciplined, they'll be hard-nosed, uh, they won't beat themselves. It'll be a physical, you know, kind of grind it out type game. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to be in and regardless of the opponent, we were going to be excited. And, you know, going to Charlotte for Davion and Tyshawn, you know, to go home and be able to play an NCAA tournament game is pretty, pretty special, certainly be a special time for them. <laughs> No, I mean, the last couple of days, yeah, I definitely watched a lot of different games. Uh, I mean, this is a great time of year anyway, and so it's. I was actually kind of looking at different games because I knew we would possibly be 8-9, so I thought we might be in Virginia's side of the bracket. But, uh, yeah, I just tried to enjoy all the games right now, and like Max said, we're very honored to be a part of the tournament. And so it's just kind of appreciating this time of year is always great. Um, we actually uh, had a bunch of guys get together last night and had dinner and watched a couple of games last night and it was we were all talking about where we would be and where we thought we'd be and uh, in the end of our discussion we thought we'd be in this part of the bracket so uh, we we kind of knew um, where we were going to end up and um, like Tyler said I mean we're just excited to be here um, it's not a lot of people get to be in our position and the fact that uh, we're dancing in March is is all that matters. Um. Yeah, you know, like Toby said, we watched a lot of the games yesterday. I got a chance to watch all the championship games. And, you know me, I've always loved watching college basketball. So this throughout the season, I've always watched a, a lot of teams. So I've kind of got a feel for a lot of teams that we could have potentially, potentially been playing. But, you know, like Toby said, we talked about being in this position yesterday. And now it's a good feeling that is actually here. And, you know, we have a chance to play against a good team. Marcus, just your thoughts on playing Kansas State where you started your college career? Um, you know, it's always exciting to to play a team that you once played for. I think if you would ask me that question when I first got here, you know, I would have been more like I want to get payback or have revenge. But, you know, with this year being my senior year, I don't – it really didn't matter who we would have played. I would have been excited just to be able to get out there and play in this tournament. You know, like Coach said, a lot of teams that – thought they could have got in, didn't get in, and, you know, you just got to be grateful that we're in the tournament. How much did that cross your mind? Because I mean, last year, they were the same <coughs> site, but I don't think you guys were going to play them. I mean, did you think ever, I might play this team at some point in the NCAA tournament, that might be kind of weird? Or? Um, I've always wanted, when I first committed here, I've always said I wanted to play him in the tournament. That would be like my time to get back. And so this time throughout the season, you know, I've always heard it just constantly that, you know, there's a chance, there's a chance. And, you know, these last couple of weeks, it was really looking like there's, this seriously is going to happen. So, you know, I've been kind of preparing myself for it, you know, just, you know, for me, I got to stay even keel. I can't get too excited about it or not try to overlook it. So just trying to go with it, just enjoy the experience for my last time. Last year at this time and this year now, being that it's your last go around, is there? I'm not sure urgency is 
with every team in the country at this point in the season, but is there a different feeling now that it's your last chance to play in this tournament? Yeah, I think one of the feelings that we're all going to have is the fact that we had that experience last year. Um, last year's team, we had been in the tournament for like three years. We had two year off years, and so um, I think we can learn from last year. You know, the early exit and what we did well and didn't do well. So um, obviously, for us three up here, it's our last year. No matter what, we're seniors, and so um, we're going to you know leave everything we have, but at the same time, learn from what we did last year. I think the most important thing to take away from last year's experience is uh, that we just got to learn from uh, what we did right and what we did wrong. Um, just like Tyler said, um, that's another <coughs> key factor of where we, if we move forward or whatnot. And uh, the nice thing is uh, we, we got a strong leadership right now. And um, between the three of us standing here or sitting here and the couple of guys that are out signing autographs, uh, our leadership is, is pretty good. And um, I think that would probably be one of our key differences. But uh, uh, we, we're ready. Um, obviously, Coach Mack and all them are going to watch a lot of film and get us prepared the best they can. And uh, when it comes time to play, we just got to leave it all out there. And uh, that's that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, yeah, it's a lot different than last year. You know, I think this year guys are more excited about, you know, playing for each other rather than just, you know, being in the tournament. You know, I think guys really have this mindset that we have a chance to really make some noise and we believe it and we can do it. So I think the best thing for me to do is take from my mistakes last year. You know, I know I made a ton of mistakes in the tournament. I remember talking earlier in the season, you know, I just motivated, my, my, motivated myself by just thinking about this moment, I had playing in the tournament again and, you know, giving it my all and not, not doing too much and not <coughs> messing up. So, you know, I'm definitely want to learn from my mistakes and, like Toby said, our leadership is amazing. And it's not just the seniors, it's the freshmen too. They have their own type of leadership in different ways that helps us. Greg, did you think much about matchups or, or an ideal first round opponent? Do you, do you even allow yourself to go down that path? You had a couple days, so. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure the difference between a five seed and a 10 or 11 seed this year. I mean, it's paper thin, you know, the, you have teams that were ranked in the top five in the country in late December that are holding on for dear life to get into the tournament. And you have teams that were nowhere to be found that have made a great run and they're in the NCAA tournament. So college basketball this year is, you know, the, the unexpected became normal uh, throughout the season. And every team, no matter how good you are, Virginia is probably one of the few that avoided, uh, you know, and maybe Xavier <coughs> that really avoided having a bad week or 10 days during the season and uh, that that's rare uh, so you know we're we had a list of eight to ten teams that we thought were kind of in the same areas of obviously we felt like Butler and Seton Hall and Providence were also in that mix and obviously with Xavier and Villanova being one seeds none of us we couldn't go there with them and and if we were if Kansas ended up the number one seed in the Midwest we couldn't be there because of the Omaha connection so uh, our options were really limited if we were on the eight nine line. So, uh, but the, you know the K State thing, it'll be you know it's it's a good matchup for us. They're a really good basketball team from a good league, uh, very well coached, <coughs> and you know I think a lot will be made out of the Marcus deal. But I've known Bruce Weber a long time, and and I know him well enough to know that he'll be happy to see how Marcus has changed his life in a lot of positive ways. And, you know, it's been well documented and Marcus has talked about it. He made mistakes when he was there and he'd probably do some things different. That's part of maturing. It's part of growing up. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't, I don't think the story needs to become bigger than the game. Uh, that's where he transferred in from. Uh, he did some good things when he was there, obviously, and he's done some great things here. Uh, and it's, it'll make for, uh, you know, a, a neat storyline, but you know, the game is what's going to be important and that's where our focus will be. When you when you get to Charlotte, there's going to be a whirlwind surrounding you regarding your past. And you know, when the K State writers get there, they're probably asked a lot of the same questions that you've been asked throughout your career in Omaha. How do you hone in on what you think you need to do to focus for the game itself? That way, when the 40 minutes are <coughs> over, whether you're moving on or not, that you can kind of be at peace with how it transpired. Um, it's just, I have to stay focused and mentally locked in. Like I said, I can't get too high or get too low about it, try to over overlook it. So for me, it's just, I've had this goal all season of getting us back to the tournament. You know, one of the reasons why I came back was to play in the tournament, you know, not just to play Kansas State. So 
you know, I'm more motivated about playing in the game and giving it my all and, you know, doing whatever it takes. You know, like I said, if this is my redshirt year. I'd have probably came out here and said, yeah, I'm going get, to go get 40 on my old school. But now it's more about just winning. I don't care what I have to do to win. I just want to win this game and win the next game and keep going, keep it moving. You know, I just don't want my career to end yet. Uh, no, I haven't talked to him since I left. <clears throat> Any other questions? Oh, you know what, Coach um, Big East, I mean, they got six teams in, and, and uh, <clears throat> Providence is a 10 seed, and they almost won the Yeah, so, you know, and I, I think I don't know that for a fact, and it maybe it will be one of the questions that Bruce will answer. My guess is, <clears throat> you know, we couldn't play with Xavier and, and, and Villanova. And we couldn't play in the Midwest region. I think Seton Hall's there, right? Uh, so they couldn't be on the eight nine in line. It, Butler, Butler or Providence. So you either got to move them to a seven or you got to move them to a ten. Uh, so I, I think I, I don't know how that all transpired, but yeah, that's pop, that's what I'm saying. Butler and Providence could not be an eight or a nine. Uh, the math wouldn't work. Uh, so they had to be either bumped up to a seven or bumped down to a ten. Uh, to make it work. So, you know, it, it was a great league. And I think you, <coughs> while we were disappointed that we lost to Providence in, in the Big East tournament, uh, I mean, Providence is a good basketball team. And we saw that in their win against Xavier. We saw it in the game last night against Villanova. I mean, it was just a great Big East college basketball game. And, you know, anything can happen with our teams. I think, I think hopefully what our league has done is it's, it's, we're battle tested because we didn't have any easy games since December 31st or 30th when we started this. I mean, you had to be ready to hook it up every single night or you're going to get beat. And there aren't many leagues in the country where that's the case across the board, but the bottom of our league was so improved this year. And obviously the top of our league uh, was really, really good as, you know, as we have two number one seeds. I don't know if you guys can answer this or not because it might be just <laughs> my own like, media fan perspective, but is it, is it that's to think that the season kind of came down to two or three games that might have swung it, or you know, <coughs> if you don't beat Nova, if you don't beat DePaul, then you're nervous today. Like that, the the, the line. I, I guess it kind of goes back but to what you said, Greg. The line is paper thin. We we talk about three. it all the time with our team, just about not only just a game. You don't know which possession over the course of a season could could change the whole complexion of your season. I mean, one possession in a lot of our games. You know, we make one more mistake against Villanova and, and we lose that game. You know, we don't – Marcus doesn't hit the shot at DePaul, we lose that game. And, you know, maybe we make one more play against Xavier, we win that game. Or maybe we play yesterday because we beat Providence and we get a chance at Xavier again. So, I mean, it's – it's uh, it, one play here or there changes everything. And, you know, the difference between winning three or four games where you're – you know, we're, we're 21 and 11, and you flip four games, and you know we're 17 and 15. We're not even in the NIT, uh, but you find a way to win enough of them, and, and you're you know you're an eight seed in the NCAA tournament. So it's uh, it's what our league's about. You know, when we made the move to the Big East five years ago, I think this is what we envisioned: like hard nosed tough basketball. If you can find a way to win half your games or a few more. You're going to be an NCAA tournament team, and the hardest part is getting in the tournament. And then you just, you know, you hope you get some decent matchups and luck's on your side, and you find a way to advance. And uh, this senior class has been really important to me. They've all done a terrific job of leading our program in their own way. Uh, and we've talked about trying to accomplish something that nobody else has done. And obviously, we'll have to go through a great K-State team, and you got the best team in the country waiting for you after that if you're fortunate enough to get by that one. But uh, you know, we're excited to play. <laughs> From the players' perspective, the fact that all three of you are up there um, and you got here following different paths, and um, to know that the last two years you've kind of had to go through an 18 game meat grinder essentially and find your way to this point. I know you're not satisfied where you currently are, but to get to this point, from what you had to go through to get to this point, um, what kind of satisfaction is there? to know how tough the road was up to this point. Yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot about it already, both here and back in the show, of how difficult it is to get here and how proud of it we are to be back in the tournament. So that was one of our initial goals coming into this year. And it, it is nice to kind of reflect back and know that we checked that box um, this year and made it back to the tournament for me and Toby's third time here. 
And so we're excited not only, again, like I said, to make it, but, you know, we want to do something that hasn't been done here, win a couple games into the tournament. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely – this is a day for celebration because, um, you know, we, we did something that we set out to do before the year and not a lot of teams are going to make the tournament and get to go get dancing. So we're definitely proud of it and uh, we'll get started on K-State tonight and this week. I think uh, our move to the Big East was one of the greatest things for our, our, our school and our program, just not only because it prepares us for this. Uh, I mean, we like Max said, we haven't had a, an easy game since the first Big East game, you know, so we're prepared for the for any situation. Um, you know, we're going to stand behind Coach Mack and all the coaches, no matter what they what they throw at us. And um, we're just going to try to do whatever we can to execute what they tell us to do. And um, whether we win or lose, I mean, we're we're proud to be sitting here today. And um, you know, we're, we're like I like like TC said, we're dancing, and uh, in the end, that's all that matters at this point. Um, and then obviously tomorrow we're going to change our focus to uh, from celebration to to business. So. Yeah, this this Big East Conference was tough this year. You know, I just remember last year you could always play the tough teams like Villanova, Seton Hall, Xavier, and then, you know, you would get your breaks when you play St. John's or DePaul. But, you know, this year you had to be prepared every game. And, you know, I remember every game we really had to go extra just to beat these teams. And if we were in this spot at the – if you were told we were going to be in this spot again this season, you know, I didn't think we would have – you would call it a successful season. But now looking at all the talent we had to play, it ended up being a successful season for us and you know I'm just so excited how we bounce back from game to game you know even when we, we went through that three game losing streak we figured out a way to figure things out when we played Villanova so you know I'm just excited to see what the future holds for us in this uh, tournament. And I'll add to that you know one of the hardest things to do in college athletics in my opinion is to do what you're supposed to do and win the games you're supposed to win uh, and we did that this year. You know, we, we had no losses in quadrant three or quadrant four, which I think is a big reason we're we're wearing a white jersey on the in the first round. Is that we we found a way to win the ones we were supposed to win, uh, because you have to do that. And and you know the other thing that I'll say about this group, uh, <clears throat> because I mentioned their leadership. You know, not many teams that wore a white jersey in the first round of the NCAA tournament lost their point guard halfway through the tournament. And not many that are going to wear a white jersey this year lost their starting center and leading rebounder and leading shot blocker halfway through your season. A lot of teams that that happened to, they're not, they're not sitting here having a press conference today. These guys have found a way, and I give them an incredible amount of credit. You know, we're where we are today because of our leadership, because the leadership has helped Tyshawn and Mitch and Jacob move forward to the point where they're out there to start the overtime against Providence on Thursday. And, you know, Martin Krampel has, has got Jacob Epperson's ear every day in practice, every play, and these guys have helped these guys along, help them through the tough times and, and pat them on the back when they need it and, and also be demanding when they need that as well. And without that leadership, when we had the adversity of, of Martin going down and then Ronnie going down, Without these guys and what's transpired in that locker room to help those freshmen grow, uh, because Tyshawn and Mitch went through a tough stretch shooting the basketball, and Jacob didn't, you know, he, he didn't do anything till the end of January. So, these guys have done an unbelievable job of bringing that group along. And you know, I, I spent some time with the three freshmen yesterday, and, and they rave about their relationship with the upperclassmen and how they've been treated and how they've been mentored. Uh, but that's a big reason why we're here today. It's because these guys, you know, they didn't allow adversity to get in the way of uh, our path to be having a successful season. Anything else? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.